Drew and T's Norwegian road trip has so far covered over 500 miles and taken them through some stunning scenery. But with high prices and a different salvage culture... We're going to split the split difference. Drew's had to work hard to find items to make the trip worthwhile. Drew and T are now at the ancestral home of Christian Sulheim, about 200 miles north of the capital Oslo. Christian's family have lived on the site for 1,200 years, so the house is full of traditional antiques. The chaps are staying at Sulheim as Christian's guests. Refreshed after their long journey, they're ready to start salvaging. We slept well. Definitely. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I did anyway. I did anyway. Uh, yeah, thanks for last night again. Oh, amazing. Uh, yeah, got a bit of a thick head. It's a but pleasure. Apart, yeah, but apart from that, it was great. It was really good. Um, so, back to business, I think. But first, I'd like to have a t little tour of the house. I really, uh, there was so much stuff in here last night that I couldn't help looking. Things like these, for instance, these chairs. Hmm. I have no problem selling these. <laughs> I'm sorry they're <laughs> not, for, not sale. for sale. I think we're going to get that answer a lot in I think that, I think oh, nothing yeah. in the house, I think everything yeah. in the house is off limits, yeah? Things like this. Because mm -hmm. I've seen furniture like this that's been around the antiques fairs in Britain for years and sort of much lesser quality. But looking at this one, the painting's similar to the stuff I've seen in the past, but this is completely different. This is made from one of the masters in the Norwegian folk art. It's from 1770. Yeah. So this was custom built for this house. There's not yes. another one like this it's in the built world. In this room. This was built in this room? Yes. For this room. It's full of lovely things again. Where's this from? This is a copy of a rug that was sold to the King of Sweden in the 18th century. And my mother, she made this copy. She used 10 years doing this. And she made this? She made this. It's beautiful. Wow, what's, what's this, Christian? That's amazing. All this is a uh, coat. Oh! It's uh, made from Russian goat. Really? Bought my, by my great grandfather in the 18th century. Wow. This was the most, well, probably the best coat you could, could you, you could wear. Wow, that's incredible. It's beautiful, isn't it? That's amazing. And it's goat. Russian goat. Russian goat. This is wolf, but the Russian goat was the best. It sort of suits you. It does. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I think it's, it's very warm. <laughs> and I should imagine extremely rare. Yeah. Yeah? It is. So this was some of... You'd have to be a rich guy in the 18th century to buy this. I think you should try it, Andre. Well, oh, he wasn't no. so rich, but I think he gave priority to keep his... Uh, to keep him warm. Keep him warm. Yeah. Being surrounded by such fabulous antiques, Drew is in seventh heaven. But as so often happens when he visits a home full of gems, nothing in the main house is for sale. So it's onwards and upwards to the outbuildings, where there should be some items on offer. These buildings are fab. T, have you got a torch anywhere? Is it a cracking one here, by the way? Oh, that's better. I like this here, Christian. This big old pot. This was something I'd, I'd quite like to buy. I have another one that might be for sale. OK, all right. Is this... You're keeping I'm, this one? I'm too used to this, so okay. I... Right. But I have another one if you're interested. Oh, OK, so, OK. Yeah. The other thing, I've seen these here, which is this bottle rack here. It's a French thing, and we don't have so much French no. things here on the, on the countryside. But I quite like it. Yeah, it's good. It's a good size. Racks like this are known as riddling racks. Champagne bottles would have been placed neck first into the holes, allowing yeast deposits to settle. This process is called riddling. In the UK, they would sell for up to £240, or around 2,400 kroner. This is something uh, I'd be keen to buy. How much, how much would you like for it, Christian? Give me a bid. Oh, what would I end up paying for it? I think I'd probably end up paying about £60 per panel in Britain, so 60, 120. So 1,200 kron. Is that right? Yes. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. That's just a, a, a guesstimate price. It, I think it would give me a margin on it. Yeah. Yes, your last bid? 
She said 150. 150. 75. Yeah, deal. First deal done. Great. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. And we'll teach T about champagne later. I, I, okay. I'm, I'm keen to learn, <laughs> I have to say. <laughs> yeah. OK. OK, so some more sheds. Hi, more to show. Yeah. But there could be a hitch. Christian takes them to a shed which is storing some of his friend's things. If you're interested, look uh, at it. How many boxes is his stuff? A lot of. This company made some really funky plates, but it's also something that I don't deal in. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, no, those, I don't know anything about those ones. Is there anything else in here? This I like, Christian. OK. This is nice, beautiful. Mm -hmm. oh, that's lovely. Mm -hmm. Is this some of your stuff? No, it belongs to the friend of mine, but... Is it silver I think you, on there? I think you can, yes, it's silver, 925, made by David Andersen. Some kind of design thing, I think. Yeah, yeah. it's a small candelabra, is it? Yeah. Yeah, a little place setting for candles on a table. Yeah. Again, beautiful, really appreciate it, but and something I, I would happily buy and sell, mm. but I'd, I'd need to do my homework on the price of that. Mm. But it is, that's really beautiful, isn't it? That's such a good design. Mm. Such a good design. Do you know what your friend would want for this one? No. No. Might be worth giving him a call, maybe, or asking him, because it's yes. something that I really like, actually. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, um, yeah, something I'd happily buy, because it is beautiful. Made of silver mined near the Swedish border and crafted by famous Norwegian silversmith David Andersen, in the UK, this candelabra could fetch up to £450, or around 4,500 kroner. OK, do we have more to see as well? Yes. With Drew's appetite whetted by seeing Christian's own gorgeous antiques, the fact he's only managed to do one deal and the candelabra's on hold is frustrating. So they move on to another barn with the hope that it holds rich pickings. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. Theatre seats. Yeah. I've just bought 40. OK. So they're out. I'm afraid, but I did see something that, you, if you've got the other piece of it, I'd be interested in, which is this, this here, is this, this is the base for a big workbench, yeah? Yeah. Do you have the top, is that the top there? Yes. Is this some, in this pile, is this, and there's a, this pile of stuff, are you using any of this? Do you use this workbench or is this for sale? Because we do buy those, they, the people love them, we polish them and make them look really beautiful and they put them in their houses. I have several of them. Oh, have you? Yeah. Oh, okay. Quite a lot of them. You're going to get really dirty now, T. It is unusual. Yeah. If I, if I roll it to you... That's it. Right again. All right. Go over to us, Christian. Oh, <laughs> ah, piece of timbers in the way. This is great. I like this. Benches like this would have been used by joiners. Ideal for shop displays or a funky alternative to a table, in the UK it could sell for around £795, or roughly 7,950 kroner. Would this be something you'd want to sell? Would you part with this one? If you give me a good price, <laughs> I will consider. Would I tell you what, you give me a good price this time. Give me a clue. Where do you want to be? But uh, give me a... I know what I usually pay for them. Yeah. I know what I usually pay for them. Uh, and we usually pay around £200. We sell them for about £650 fully restored. Okay. If you give me 250 then? 250 250 250 Deal. Thank you. Do you have one exactly like this on the ground floor? No. <laughs> Gotta carry it down. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes by just being too mean on a deal, you can ruin the next deal. I'd rather just pay the man the money, and it's a much better deal and a much better feeling for both of us as we go on and try and find more things. While Christian rings his friend about the candelabra, Drew is keen to find the other pot that might be for sale. OK, 
Okay. Yeah, drag it out. It's a lot more battered than the other one. That's just the, that's just the only odd bit, but still. Christian. Ah. Two things. I talked to my friend. Oh, uh, yeah. And he's willing to sell this to you for £200. OK. Well, the name rings a bell. It is silver and it is absolutely beautiful. 200 Is that his best, best price? Do you think? Yes. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Beauty for £200. I'll take that. Lovely. Yeah. This was the other copper pot you mentioned, yeah? Mm-hmm. Um, it's a bit beaten up compared to the other one, isn't it? <laughs> I'm not saying I don't like it. Yeah. I can't believe I'm going to say this, but do you want to sell it? <laughs> I don't know. I know. <laughs> do you want to sell this sort of beaten-to-hell pot? It's just got something about it. It's, it's quite better sharp. being good friends. Yeah. After this. Uh-huh. Christian grins at me and says, well, I'd like I'd rather remain friends than sell you something in this condition. And I sort of know what he means. OK, but this we will take, because it's just a thing of beauty and it's beautifully made and it's marked and I do recognise the name. I just need to do my homework on it. I don't know, but... Uh, hey. What you said? For £200, I'll buy it. Lovely. OK, we'd better start loading the van up. Even Christian mocks in and gets his hands dirty. You can take the boy off the farm. <laughs> you can never take the farm out of the boy. Drop it on the... That's it. And all the way down to it. You got it? Yeah. OK. Two points. I'll do fair play to you, Christian. Hope you don't regret. <laughs> <laughs> I won't. I won't. They were decent. They were clever, warm-hearted, and I had a great day with them. Great seeing you guys. You're welcome back whenever. It was an honour and a privilege to be introduced to the best of Norway by you. Thank you. Thank you. And, and thank thank you. you for your hospitality. It's been great. Cheers. Have bye -bye. a nice trip. Will do. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Done? Yep. All in. Okay. Well, what a place. Wow. I think it's one of those places you're not going to forget for a very long time. I mean, look at it. We've stayed in Norwegian history. Yeah, it feels like that, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. And in the midst of all that, yeah. we did a bit of work. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we did. Yeah. We did. We did some work. Even though the visit to Sulheim has been fruitful, there's still a lot of empty space in the van. So they press on to their next appointment. They're driving five and a half hours south to Bergen. Got a fairly long trek, I'm afraid. Okay. Uh, to Bergen, and we're going to Bergen to visit uh, a salvage yard. But they're looking at it more on the eco side of things rather than the antique side of things, from what okay. I can tell. So it's going to be different. Terribly, we have to drive for six hours through stunning countryside. I know, I know, it's tough, isn't it? Did you want sunglasses to darken it so it's, <laughs> so it's not so pretty? Yeah, put your sun visor down, you don't <laughs> want to see all of it. The journey takes them across the second largest fjord in the world. The Sonja Fjord is over 125 miles long and almost three miles wide. These U-shaped fjords were gorged out by glaciers in the last ice age and then flooded when the sea level rose. It's a 20-minute ferry ride and a chance for the boys to take in some nature. And there's a surprise in store. Look, 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 there. Wow. Oh, boss, there. Look, there, 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 there. there. There's a little one as well. Three of them. It's giving me new porpoise for my life. Porpoise. <laughs> Magic moment's over and it's back on the road. The next morning, the chaps are in the picturesque old harbour town of Bergen. Bergen lies on the west coast, in between the Sonja Fjord and Hardanger Fjord. Steeped in history, it dates back to 1070. It's Norway's second largest city and busiest port. Drew and T are on their way to one of the few public salvage yards in the whole of the country. 
We're here to see a group called the NMF, uh, the Green Warriors of okay. Norway. They've set up here in Bergen a very, very old, I think, 18th century manor house. And uh, the guy we're meeting today is called Ruben. My name is Ruben Odegaard, and I work at the Eco Market in Bergen. We have doors and building items all people want to buy. We try to help. I think it's highly commendable anybody doing this type of recycling. Because have you noticed as we drive around Norway, there is one thing. What, wooden buildings? No, the place is ridiculously clean and tidy and beautiful. I'll tell you what I do hope they have. That I've, while we were driving around Bergen, uh -huh. they have wires that go across the road. Yeah. And they have these weird enameled street lights. Uh -huh. Have you seen them? They're not everywhere. That's yeah, the type yeah. of lamp. Like Those, see, see that strange see lamp that above us? House, actually. Now, is nice. that cool or what? Yeah. So, you never know. Yeah. It's just on the left here. If... Yeah. It's an 18th century house underneath a flyover. Like and that's exactly what it is. Because the old house is a protected building and can't be demolished, they just had to build the flyover around it. Hi, we're here to see Ruben. Yeah, it's me. Hi, Hi. how are you doing? Welcome, My Drew. Nice to meet this you. This is T. Hi. Um, we're dealers from uh, the UK, yeah. uh, and uh, we've come to have a look at your yard. I think we should go out in the backyard. I have some quite old doors. If you like to see them, these doors are quite nice. Quite like the colour. Not too big. I don't have the frame. No, it's always handy if you get the frame with it, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. I like the paint on them. Yeah. I like all these cusps here on the top of this sort of lancet. Gothic Revival look to them. These doors were originally from a historic house in Bergen, a very rare commodity in Norway, but common back in the UK, where they could retail for approximately £650, or around 6,500 kroner. I've got 3,000 doors in stock. Yeah, you do. All antique. Yeah. I need to do some checks on them. Yeah. It's, they tended to be cut down. Should check, we've still got a yeah. good mortise there. Decent thing. And then always check that they're straight. Yeah. How much are they, Ruben? Uh, I have to check inside, but I think it's four and a half thousand. <laughs> no. Four and a half, 450. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to find out what the real price is? Yeah, I can. We'll go from there? Yeah. OK, let's do that. Yeah. I'll carry on having a look around. Yeah. There isn't uh, a culture like we have in Britain of architectural salvage, which has been around for an awful long time. It's something that they're just getting into. So that could work in Drew's favour. He and T have the chance to root around while Ruben goes off to check the price of the doors. It's just like you, you that, that's the missing link. <laughs> Tile, I like this window. Oh, it's a skylight. See that? Yeah. Like that. Oh, yeah. See? Yeah. Yeah. Up there for dancing again. Just, unfortunately, get offered the ones in Wales all the time, great big cast ones. Yeah. Nobody wants them. Nobody wants them, it's a shame. Old handmade bricks, look. God, these are... Wow, nice. those are ancient. Look at those. Handmade. Some, you know, literally with the clay like that yeah. in wooden boxes. So this this would be local from uh, the houses around here, do you yeah, reckon? Yeah, yeah. So if you're rebuilding, these are these are these are really really desirable for rebuilding. Yeah. We've got more different type here. I think they'd be later. God, they're really unusual. Bricks, I don't know much about, but I know that actually that's very quite beautiful. Actually. Well, you have been thick as one for some time now. <laughs> that's nice. Look. Yeah, that is lovely. You know. He's lucky to have those. That's good. It's just modern stuff. No. This is their sort of junk pile, I think, looking at it. Nothing in here. Yeah, I found out about the price. It was on. Was this, it? this was the original price I sat on them. And all, I already had, had two people wanting to buy them. Really? Yeah, and it was not the price that's 9, set them up. But 950. Yeah, but we that's can discuss it. But 
I would have to. Yeah. The price difference here, that's that's the first price difference, which is is hugely different. Yeah, but your market is England and you have a lot of a lot, of a lot more. Yeah, so a lot more. But the Norwegian price isn't necessarily... 950, I think once we'd done the glass and cleaned them, yeah. I don't think we'd get 950 in England restored. Really? I, th I think we've just found a new market for your doors. Yeah, do you want to buy some doors? <laughs> <laughs> There's no money left. I need to knock 650 pounds off his asking price. I'm not going to do that. So, with the doors a no-goer, Ruben leads them into the main building to continue the hunt. OK, so what's this, Ruben? We have uh, some antique stuff, records and movies. OK. So this is your saving, really, anything and everything, then? Yeah. Anything that sh shouldn't go to landfill, you're saving? Yeah. Well, I'm looking for older things. I've spotted yeah. a couple of things as I'm walking around the city, mm -hmm. um, which is... On, you have on wires above the street these big, green, sort of weird-shaped lamps. Yeah. I don't think we have any. No? I know we have had, but... I I'm like not... those. So I'm looking for things like that, or yeah. engineering, or, or sort of industrial storage, shelving, boxes, tables, chairs, uh, cupboards, yeah. anything like that, older, if possible. Yeah. We don't get this a lot. Oh, really? They are old and with the key. That's quite unique. True. For us. They normally come in without the key. Yeah, Always. without yeah. the key, and, yeah. and these are in quite good shape. We had boxes of these at work. Yeah. yeah. And they're all missing the key. Yeah, hundreds exactly. of them. Exactly. Hundreds of them. So to get a set with keys is always unusual. Yes. And they're quite nice, but it's got a nice old key. Mm. With no deals so far, Drew keeps his chin up and presses on. It's very difficult for me to find the things I like. But you never know. No, it's too it's too modern some of this stuff yeah, for me. It it's great. I mean I really do, I really do appreciate what you're doing, but it's it's more looking yeah, for older I items. I understand. They might fit you then, Drew. There for a little mouse there. Just your size, yeah. <laughs> Put your tiny little I need, feet in I there. need some shoes, of course. <laughs> where, where can we go next, then? Uh, we can go up to the second floor. Yeah, please. This is a fabulous old building, Ruben. How old is it? It's from 1720. 1720? Wow. Yeah. I'm loving this staircase. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, these are quite old. Yeah. How many have you got of these? I get... I have four with the seat and everything. And I have... One that's without, and another one that has been changed. Maybe these will be the saviors of this salvage trip. Unusual. Shame the condition's quite bad. Yeah. It's, it's a shame, isn't it? Yeah, They've been it really beaten up. Even though these chairs are in bad condition and would need a lot of restoration, Drew sees their potential. If he can get them at a low enough price, they could be worth it. The, the sort of the thing I like, yeah. what I like the most is this thing at the back here. These markings are called Boomerker. Like a family crest or coat of arms, they vary according to the original owner, who had them carved to demonstrate their ownership. It's a tradition which dates back to Viking times. Once restored back in the UK, they could fetch up to £200 each, or around 2,000 kroner. you definitely got one more. I have one more. We For can sure. take a look at it if you like. OK. Well, it's... What's it, what condition is it compared to these ones? I think it's better, yeah. It's pen tree, how much are they? I think What's it's the price 350, I think. Yeah, it's yeah. 350 each. Each? Yeah. So 35 pounds each? Yeah. Yeah, that is too much for me. So unusual. I think I'd be happy to pay um, uh, 20 pounds a chair. I'm not used to discuss price in pounds, but... Oh, oh that'd be 200 yeah, to go. About yeah, about 200. Yeah, about 200. But uh, I'd like to buy them all, ideally. Yeah, if you buy them all, you can have them for 23 or something. 22. Yeah, fine. Deal. Deal. <laughs> right. Then you take all six of them, right? I'll, I'm happy to take all six. Yeah. yeah, we'll make them up. We'll make yeah. them up. It's this, really, I'm buying them for. That. And then if you sit and look, stand and look at them, mm -hmm. they're good. Ruben returns with the sixth chair. The last one. Oh, right, it's one. totally different. Yeah. yeah, so it's already been doing a lot of work on it. Yeah. These are mine now. Yeah. I'm going to pay for them. Excellent. All right, I'm going to rip them. I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> no go. problem. Is it nice? I'm hoping they've left the old upholstery in there. It may seem extreme, but this is the only way to find out if the original padding is inside. So how would it help you if that's left in, then? Because the shape of the chair's still there and the original padding, which I'd much rather match, see this through this Hessian. Yeah. It's much nicer. Excellent. Still happy, Ruben. Great. 
Well, let's get the chairs loaded up and, yep. and we'll, we'll, we're done. Dealing with Drew is quite interesting because he has a lot of knowledge and I learned a lot of things from him. Thank you so much. I really admire what you guys are doing. It's wonderful for Norway. Yeah. Fabulous. Thank you very okay. much. It's been yeah. great. Right, okay. we'll get loaded up. Have a safe trip. Cheers, bye-bye. So all in all, really, what we did today was just make a good connection with Ruben. Right. But it's interesting to see a slightly different take on architectural salvage. As ever, no matter what, you can always buy more. Yeah. It's never really enough. You know, uh, we need stock constantly, so... Really, we're just going to have to move on and just see if we can find something else. On to their next stop, and Drew and T travel 380 miles southeast to a manor house near Sarpsborg, just south of Oslo. It is amazing, this place, actually, isn't it? I can't actually find where we are. Well, you know why that is? No. Nope. That's Sweden there. You've got it upside down. That's better. <laughs> uh, there you go. <laughs> that can happen. A hundred miles into their journey, they come across Langfossen Waterfall. One of the largest and most spectacular waterfalls in Europe, it boasts an impressive 2,000-foot drop. Well, I think you should look up from the map for oh a second. Oh, my. Look at that. Absolutely amazing. Wow. How many tons of water are coming over there a second? Wow. That's incredible. I've not seen a waterfall that big ever. I can't think I've never seen anything even vaguely like that before. So, once again, Norway continues to amaze, leaving Drew and T in awe. They press on a further 250 miles, so they're nearer their next appointment in the morning. But what will tomorrow hold? We're going to a place today called Hafsland Manor, right. which is a, an historic building. Um, and why they've uh, asked us to go today is they have a lot of outbuildings that have a lot of period furniture there. As country houses usually yield rich pickings back home, Drew's hoping the same is true here. And this is his last chance to fill the van before they leave Norway. I heter Dan Karlsvang. We are now on Hafslund Hovedgård in Sarpsborg. First time we hear about Hafslund Hovedgård is in 1344. Have you learned nothing? I have. What have you learned about Norway? Uh, that it's lovely. It's lovely. The people are lovely. Lovely. Yeah. You, you don't appreciate the architecture, the history, the way that they've managed to retain their identity. Yeah, but I've just done it in one short word. Lovely. Yeah. Thanks for your input. <laughs> Remind me not to ask you anything ever again. Is this the place? That's amazing. Look at that. Ooh, they've left it nice. It's really nice. Lots and lots of outbuildings. Even the barns are great. All locked, and look, they've been locked in a long time. That's a good thing. The site at Hafslun has been occupied for over 5,000 years. The present Baroque-style manor was famous for its cultural events and attracted royalty from all over Europe. Hello. Dan. Hello, sir. And welcome to the Drew. Hello. Nice to meet you. Hi, Thomas. Dan. Drew. Hi, Hi. Hello. Dan is joined by his friend Hello. Thomas. Well, um, we've been to some pretty grand houses, but this takes the biscuit. This is fabulous, amazing. We're here to do some business, as you know. But while we're here, can we have a quick look round? Show you. You're going to know where the best piece is. Okay. Please show us. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's staggering. You sort of expect it, but when you see it, it's still amazing. Yes. Who built this house we're in now? Uh, his name was Eliasson. It burned down and it was rebuilt in 1762, yeah. as we can see it today. The restoration they've put into this building is perfection. The colour scheme's breathtaking, very, very different to what I've seen in the UK. It's got strange mix because you've got sort of your Norwegian look and then you've got things that look like English Regency here and then French looking and then Swedish. So it's a, it's a mix, isn't it? It, it is. Wow. wow. This is a lovely room. Mm. It's beautiful. I love the floors as yes. well. Yes, yeah. That's lovely. The original. Original floors. Yes. Would they have always been bare like this? Would yes, that's right. Yes, yes. Is this a music room? 
Yes, it's a music group wow. from 762. Ah, look at that. Murano. Yes, that's right. Wow. Mm. I've never seen a big one like that wow. before. That's quite astonishing. Murano glass is made on the Venetian island of Murano and dates back to the 13th century. This type of glass is known for its intricate designs and can fetch very high prices. I have one in stock in my shop. Okay. okay. This big. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um it's odd to say it, but uh, we're gonna have to stop looking around the house. You've got some things to sell, right. I'm keen to buy. Mm -hmm. What I'd say is can we go and have a look at that? I think. Okay. Yeah, so please if you could show me where it is, we're keen to have a look. With nothing for sale in the main house. T and Drew are led to an old barn at the back of the manor. This is incredible. You need one of these. Yeah. Wow. Is this all stuff you don't use? Yes. They're really quite beautiful. Yeah. We, we can't buy them. No. no. We can't do anything with them. These 19th century carriages have a limited market back in the UK, so they're a no-goer for Drew. You've got loads of stuff up here. Maybe I can show you something here. In this? In here? In here, yes. OK, what is it? Wow. <laughs> it's an oven all made up of uh, tiles. Ah, it's an oven. Yeah. It's a very attractive oven. <laughs> yeah. Normally yeah. that nice. Did this come from the house? Uh, yes. It doesn't look Norwegian. It's uh, from Sweden. It's quite badly damaged. Yeah, there's just more breaks. Every time I look, there's more and more damage. It's a shame when you find something like that and you have to walk away from it, but that's what you have to do. My first reaction is to walk away, so I always will. No, nothing in here, guys. Can we try another one of the barns? Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. There's a couple of things in here. Huh. These are modern? Yes. Did you buy these here for here? Yes. About 10, 20 years ago? 15 years ago. 15 years ago, yes. yeah. Yes. yeah. OK, so this is all modern stuff in here, guys. I have a scan around the room, get the torch out, because it's dark in the corners. Um, there's nothing there. It's all new. Nothing of interest for me in that room. Dan takes them into the next building. It's full of discarded furniture from the manor house. I can't sell this one. Oh, really? No. Oh, OK. Yeah. OK, Dan. And it's not long before Drew spots something of interest. This here. This piece here. It's just a little side table. I'll take this away. Yeah. yeah. Okay, hang on. There you go. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. Low table. The marble on this table is known as Norwegian rose and was mined locally. With a bit of a clean and a polish, it could command around £800 in the UK, or around 8,000 kroner. Again, it had quite a bit of repair work. Some strengtheners put in it. But it's generally all there. There's some breaks to that, uh, the garland at the bottom. Some pieces move missing there. I think... I think the maximum I can go to on this, and to, so I can just cover myself, would be 300, so 3,000 kroner. I think that's where I'd be. Um, uh, or I'd have to leave it, I think. I think I can turn it over at that. Yes. I think so. Mm -hmm. I can't afford to spend any money on it whatsoever. Um, it's it's, it's a style over substance on this table. Mm. You know what I mean? It's, it's, a, mm. it's, it's all style and there's not much. Mm. Mm. Not much else about it. I think that's where I'd be. OK. You happy with that? Yes, I'm happy. You're, you're just happy to clear out. Yes, I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> could I have bought it for less? No. <laughs> <laughs> Deal. Deal. Thank you. OK. Then Drew spots something behind T. Oh. Wow. T, you OK? Yeah. Lift. Done it. OK. What is it? Ah, there you go. Wow. That's really interesting, isn't it? 
it's poorly made. You know, it looks really fancy to, when you first see it, but it's very, very naively carved. You'd be surprised just how rough it is underneath here. Just really basic construction. Such a fancy looking object. The ornate nature of this trunk is typical of the Swedish style known as Gustavian and would have stored bed linen. With minor restoration, it could sell for £695 in the UK or around 6,950 kroner. So for sale, how much is this? I don't know. Maybe. Um, I'll make an offer on, on it because, it's, yes, it's very, very fancy. Yes, it's very unusual. It's got to have another use. It's got to have a secondary use. Uh, it's too tall for a coffee table. So I'm thinking to give me a margin or to sell it as it is, um, I just going to do a little bit of work. I would pay 400, which is 4,000 kroner. Yes. Um, and then that gives me a margin. Once I've got it home, it'll owe me about 550 mm. by the time I have it home. Mm. Then another 50 pounds worth of work, 600 mm. by the time it's ready mm. to sell. It's very, very, very different to my normal fare. Yeah. It really is. Um, but that I'd be happy with. OK. Deal? Deal. Dan, thank you. Mm. Right, let's get this out of the way, because I'd like to get that out of there. Drew spotted something in the back. Can you get it? I can I, 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 down there with my, are you sure? my slim physique. Are you sure? Look at that. Oh, breathe. <laughs> Come on. OK. Might be yeah. a little bit heavy. Okay. One, two. You get round a bit more. OK. I feel, I feel a loose leg yeah. already. What about the sofa? <laughs> yeah, it's had a lot of old repairs. It's period, though, 1830s into 1840. Can you tell if it's got the original stuff in it? Yeah, if you just squeeze it. It's still the horsehair in it, and we'd re reupholster it, see it's all frayed and gone. Drew peers into an existing rip in the upholstery to check what's underneath. Yeah, there's the original fabric. Okay, they've just gone straight over the top. OK, let's have a quick look at the other one. There's another one, very, very similar, same age, stylistically more or less exactly the same, but simpler. You can see the frame underneath. OK. Nice original frame, no rot. See how basic they are, how basic the construction is. These ornate mahogany scroll-end sofas are highly sought after. Refurbished and sold as a pair, they could be worth up to £3,400 in the UK, or around 34000 kroner. We've got a fair bit of work to do um, to the upholstery on this one. On that one, there's a lot of woodwork to do. I think for £4,000, mm. I think this one would be the same. So we'd be looking at £8,000 kroner for both sofas. It's OK. You happy with that? Yes. Um... Good deal. Very happy. Very happy. Right, we've got to get those out there because there's something else I've seen in there as okay. well. There's more, there's more. There's no stopping Drew now. He spots another sofa hiding in the back. Yeah, it's a sofa, sort of very low back sofa come day bed. I just like really simple and it's just such an elegant shape. This very, very low back and the very long curled arm here and that roll and the leg. Everything about it really. I like colour of this wood. Day beds have been popular since medieval times and seen as a hallmark of comfort and beauty. In the UK, this one could retail for £800 or around 8,000 kroner. Uh, where would you like to start? Um, uh, we can say uh, the same price as the first one? This one's going to be less. OK. This one will be less. OK. Um, I think I'd be happy to pay... 300 so 3,000 kroner. But that would be, I'd be happy with. I think that's that's fair on that one. Yes, that's yeah. okay. You happy? Good. Yeah. Another deal. <laughs> Dan and Thomas today have absolutely saved my bacon. I've done what I wanted to do. I've come here, I bought a lot of furniture. Like everybody we've met in Norway, they've been utterly charming, incredibly polite, and they couldn't be more accommodating. Oh, you all right? Yeah. You okay? Yeah, yeah. Hold it there. You all right? Yeah. Where do you want it? This side? To the other side, this time. 
Lucky you're here, isn't it? Oh! It's a big boy. Can you buy lighter stuff? It's not going to fit in the middle, see? It'll, go, it'll have to go upside down on the one to your left. All right. OK. All right. Ooh. 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 Ooh too much breakfast. <laughs> Dinner and tea. And beer. No, beer's fine. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> well, to be honest with you, glad we bought all this lot, even though it's work. All right. Well, otherwise you wouldn't pay me, would you? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, we can turn a profit now. It's such a strange piece of furniture. Til slut må jeg bare si at det er en fantastisk dag. Jeg må innrømme at jeg var litt spent, men dette har vært en veldig interessant og hyggelig tid for oss. It was a good day for me. OK. A good day for me. happy? I'm happy. Uh, I bought a lot of stock. Then we all are happy? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great to meet you, Dan. Thank Same you for your you. time. Thank you. Thomas, Thank pleasure. you very much. Thank you. Same. Nice meeting you. Nice meeting you. Yeah. Fabulous. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> OK, nice guys. He's going to miss you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. Right. Well, I'll tell you what. We've got everything in before it started raining. Luckily, we've been lucky with the weather all round, actually. We've hardly had any rain at all. I'm happy. I'm happy. I'd have just carried on buying there all day if there was anything left to buy. So we're going back with enough profit to cover the trip and give us a good turn on what's there. Brilliant. And pay my wages, more importantly. Yes, yes, we're going to pay your wages. And Probably, you know, soup. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, keep Enzo in the manner to which he'd like to be accustomed. <laughs> Enzo will be happy as long as he can sit on one of those sofas. He won't Is be it? That's yeah. It. I think we've only just scratched the surface of Norway. So you're going to pay me to come back then? No. <laughs> With all the ups and downs well and truly behind them, Drew and T's Norwegian adventure officially comes to an end. Drew can be happy knowing that once back at base, Rebecca and the gang will have lots of unique items to renovate and sell. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hi, you're right. Hello, stranger. Nice to see you. Are you well? I'm very well, thank you. Good. Very well. Oh, oh, lovely to see you. And you. And so, what's your back? And so. Come on. Mind your back? Yes. Oh. Ah. <sighs> and the boy. Trip? Yeah, oh, tiring. Yeah? Very, 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 very tiring. Good evening. Oh, Good my. Evening. Give me your arms. There you go. Not bad, eh? I actually thought you were coming back with a half empty van. We got lucky towards the end. Thank um, God. But very, very difficult to find stuff, mate. Yes, it was. It's all hands on deck to unpack the van full of Nordic treasure. Verve Cleek. I'd prefer it if it had champagne in it. Nice, sir. Very, very stylish. Solid silver. Right, come on, fellas, jump up. This is all heavy. Nice, sir. Right, you're on, T. Right, Ollie. Yep. You're on the Stella, Ollie. Oh, deeply attractive dog. Yeah. Stick some lights in the eyes. It's nice. Couple of golf ball bolts. There you go. So, what do you think? These are oversized sofas. They look like British sort of 1840s ones. The long and the short of it is that Hassel Manor saved us. Um, we weren't finding enough stuff. We went to one place in the end and we managed to find three big lumps of furniture. Well, I'm so pleased. So pleased. Yeah. Isn't that super? It is. Nice to see something that has a different look. Totally different. We bought this from a place called Sole Brug. It's just a great shape. <coughs> this little brass piece on the base of the foot here. Oh, it's lovely. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It's fine. <laughs> Wasting no time, the candelabra from Sulheim and the antlers and ram's head from Langedrag are ready to go directly onto the website. The champagne racks have been sold and are being shipped off to Switzerland. One of the scroll end sofas needs a great deal of work, so Rebecca's taken it off site to upholster a Craig. You know Drew had um, a trip to Norway. Right. Well, this is one of his finds from a big old manor house. It's a nice piece and all the seats seems in good condition. So we'll have a look at what's under the seats to start with. Yeah. First, they want to find out what's inside. It's all very right. similar design to what's Isn't on here it? now. Okay. Craig keeps the original springs, a 
and will then upholster in new fabric. Back at base, Gavin has two chores on his list. First up, the workbench from Sulheim. He sands it to remove the years of wear and tear. Next, he applies a healthy dose of wax. Gives it a bit of colour, and once the wax goes on, you let it dry for a bit. I'm going to polish it, so it'll give it a bit of a shine. Next up, he tackles the dining chairs by first removing the varnish and then applying a coat of bleach to lighten the wood. They look a million dollars. After four days, Craig brings the newly upholstered sofa back to base. There you go. Almost like brand new. For Drew, it's the moment of truth. I'm really, really happy with how this looks. It's a real risk, to be honest, upholstering anything in this colour. But this is such a massive and bold sofa, I just thought, go with that colour with it. It's now a really in-your-face, fabulous-looking sofa now. And the Hafslund Manor daybed finds a temporary home in Drew and Rebecca's house. He's a good boy. It needs an in-situ photograph to get the feel of it. Fingers crossed um, it'll sell quickly. <laughs> Cheers, Craig. Norway on the whole was just an incredible place, somewhere I, I actually can't wait to go back to. I'm really keen to go back to the place, the whole thing. There's nothing about the country I didn't like. It was exceptional. Um, and also, if I can go there, do a bit of business, buy some stuff as well, it's a double whammy for me. Wonderful.